in a country where clearly voter turnout levels are pretty low, lots of people believe that politicians don't work for them, where lots of people feel that uh, nothing they can do matters or in any way uh, has any impact at all. It would give citizens a lot more power if they knew a lot of stuff that was currently hidden or effectively secret. But I also think it would enable politicians to run much better government. Uh, and this is a thing that uh, I think politicians don't often believe. They tend to think transparency is just something used to harm them. And uh, opacity may hide problems today, but it almost certainly builds the biggest scandals of the sort that then cause politicians real massive trouble. So uh, if I could make them understand anything about this new world, it would be that much greater transparency probably makes them much more electable people. It is a shift in uh, power. Uh, it, it's a different kind of democracy, in my view. Uh, it is seeing representative democracy as playing an important role, and it's also not romanticising the fact that everyone wants to sit on committees. And of course, for government and politicians, that is a profound challenge to the way politics is normally done, which is, you know, we communicate from on high, from Parliament, from Whitehall, and only once every four years or five years is there a general election where the public are brought in. Now, I think that's a good thing that this change is happening, but I think it will shake up British politics and the politics around the world in a way that people probably haven't uh, anticipated yet. If you look at what um, you know, George Osborne is saying and some of the other people in the, the new wing of the uh, Conservative Party, they, they appear to understand what's going on in the real world in terms of social networks and MySpace generations and all that kind of stuff. But I think that's partly because they have the advantage of being in opposition for, for a period of time. Whether they can apply that to, to government is another question. Remember, we do have this thing called, which is sort of voting. You know what I mean? Where people get to choose who their representatives are. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, politics is quite open to... Once every yeah. four years. Exactly. Is that enough? No, it isn't. Definitely not. I mean, I think... What, what, let me think about how I would put this. New paradigms cause dislocation and confusion. And they're, they're nearly always received with coolness, or worse, mockery, hostility, invested interest fight against change. It's very important that the role for government remains, the role for government being to provide the resources for people to make local decisions about how they want money spent uh, in an area. You know, this isn't about sort of a DIY country, because if you had a DIY country uh, without any role for government, then where would the funding come from for all the important things that people want done in a particular area, for example? I think representative democracy was based on the idea that people are thick. That's not true. I think there's a much more radical thing that will happen, which is basically that people go around the side of representative democracy. And rather than saying, I want to kind of have input on what this, this politician is deciding in parliament, they'll do it themselves. I think what we'll see is just some of the activities and powers of government um, moving into the, the public realm and they will, they will be run better by citizens than they are by government. Imagine you wanted to build a new railway between London and Birmingham that, that cut the, the journey time. How much would that cost? At the moment, the only, the only method of doing that is through taxes. Now, if you were to use the point to do that, completely outside of public policy, you could do it. You know, you could do it. There is this possibility of using these tools to do massive things, which is completely unexplored at the moment. Broader numbers of people can be engaged in something like policy formation. For example, the Green Party in Canada created its program through a wiki where all members of the Green Party could come together, just like with Wikipedia, and co-innovate and co-create a political program. And it worked out pretty well. And actually what these tools are doing are allowing people to, to make decisions themselves and, and to work collaboratively in a way that um, means that representative democracy um, is, is less meaningful to them. There's a whole new model that's emerging where we become part of the government. Mm -hmm. 
I call it Government 2.0. What I think will happen is going to be a much higher degree of hybridization between government and the people, in particular the groups of people that they serve. There's a good analogy for the new model of government in terms of the changes in the internet itself. MySpace beats MTV, CNN.com gets eclipsed by Blogger.com. Similarly, with government, governments, rather than doing everything, could more create a platform whereby citizens and others can self-organize to create better value than what currently exists. We've seen lots of other changes in the past that you know, could potentially lead to a better world, but actually result in you know, First World War trench warfare or you know, genocide in the Second World War, for example. So um, I think you know, we should be careful about having two utopian um, a, a vision, you know, for how these things will play out. Of course, there are lots of challenges in doing something like this. There'll be saboteurs. Um, there'll be some people who won't have access to the web. There's the whole complexity of millions of ideas and how these get aggregated together and the good ones come to the fore. But these are all in the category of implementation challenges. They're not in the category of reasons not to do it. any revolution there are downsides um, but I'm optimistic that um, you know we're living through what economists would call a positive supply side shock to the amount of freedom in the world more people can say more things to more people than ever in history and that that is still growing enormously and um, I think in the times when we've seen enormous increases in in intellectual or political freedom. There has certainly been a period of chaos immediately afterwards, but that over the long haul, the values of those changes have been not just mainly positive, but, but enormously positive for society. We will have a, a form of government that engages and understands and knows what to do with what people are saying. It's a politics where, um, where you can help as well as just say like what you want. And, and that's, that's an amazing thing. And, and at the moment, we're starting to see that with, with some online projects. But imagine if you know, a country was run like that, or imagine if a, even just a, a, a town was run like that, um, you know, in the way that we're starting to see you know, football clubs run like that. You know, that. I think that's a sign of things to come. goes on, we will see people increasingly comfortable participating in situations where the social value is really about other people caring enough rather than someone being paid to provide that value. And where the end point of that is, I don't know. But I do think the end result is going to be quite profound. <laughs>